Thank you very much, Fernando, for organizing and uh, allowing us to present today uh, some highlights on the PV market and industry development. Uh, before giving the floor to my colleague Izumi Kaizuka from Japan, I will uh, give you some highlights on the development of PV, trends in PV applications, which are based on um, the report that has been published some months ago, uh, the annual report of the IA PVPS Task 1 about the trends in PV applications, but I will try to give you some highlights on what happened in 2017, even if the numbers are not um, definitive yet. In order to start, just, just would like to give you some ideas about what's the IEA PVPS. I know uh, many of you have already heard about the International Energy Agency, but the IEA PVPS is the PV research group of the IEA, which is called in um, the IEA vocabulary a technology collaboration program. It counts now 32 members, 27 countries, plus the European Commission and four associations. For associations, the latest country that joins is Morocco, which just signed its participation um, a few uh, days ago. And uh, I'm happy to announce that we are starting for a new term from this year until 2023 that will uh, dig into a certain number of new fields of uh, research with regard to PV. Just um, to give you more highlights on what I'm going to present today, a large part of this presentation is based on the trends in photovoltaic application. It's a report that has been published for the first time in 1995, so two years after the inception of the IAPVPS program. It has been published almost every year since then, and it tries to give an unbiased and complete view on PV market and industry development around the world. It's a report which is uh, basically written by uh, myself and Izumi Kaizuka, so you have access to the first source of information. It's available for free. Uh, if you're using the figures, you just have to quote um, IEPVPS as the source. I would like to start with something uh, quite astonishing. That's the speed at which the PV market has developed in the last years. I'm saying that for almost 10 years, and each year the scenario is the same, but the numbers are changing. And if we're looking now at the total installed PV capacity in the world, it reached at the end of 2017, and even if the numbers are not uh, definitive, we can say that basically uh, 400 gigawatts of PV systems are producing electricity in the world against 303 just one year before. If you're looking at the numbers, it shows a perfect exponential curve. I'm not saying that it's going to continue perfectly like that, but basically it's what we can see uh, for from um, the beginning of uh, the PV era, which started, or we can say it like that, a bit more than 10 years ago now. If you, we look at basically IEA PVPS countries, they still represent something like 90% of the total global market, which allows PVPS to have a quasi-complete view on what's happening, even if some interesting developments are also happening in other markets around the world. If we're looking now a little bit at the size of the market, so I repeat it again, 2016 numbers are correct and definitive or almost definitive. Things can always change, but slightly uh, when some countries are adapting numbers in the past. But basically 2017 numbers are uh, almost known and will be published in a report um, that we will publish in the two coming years, the snapshot of PV um, markets, and showing that basically we reached almost 100 gigawatts in 2017. I will not give you the perfect number. Uh, it will come only in two weeks from now. But it shows that, again, the markets increase significantly. What we can see um, is that basically a large part of this growth came from only one continent, Asia, and especially from one single country, China. And I will come back on that. If we're looking at um, basically the development in the last years, the curve is a bit less nice than what we could have said about the total installed capacity because we had some hectic developments during some years. For instance, from 2010 to 2011, the market grew significantly and then it stagnated in 2012. But it depends a little bit how we are looking at numbers because it depends if we count installations or if we count commissionings. 
And if we basically look at the way how the PV market developed, it's a bit always a bit smoother than we, what we can see when we're just looking at the numbers. It's now a global PV market. What does that mean? It means that basically we have a penetration on almost all continents. Alors, you will tell me that uh, in the Middle East and Africa, the market has not yet developed um, at the level that it could reach. But basically, we have a large market in Asia. We have a significant market in Europe. We have a significant market in America. And I think that in a few years, we'll have a completely global market. This ha has to be compared with what existed uh, less than 10 years ago, when a very large part of the market was concentrated in only one region of the world, it was in Europe before um, the takeoff of Asia. Now this is illustrated in these small figures and the comparison between 2011 and 2016, and it will be even uh, more acute in 2017, shows that basically Europe was dominating the market in 2011 with a small part in America and a rather small part um, in Asia. But the figure is completely changed with now a very large part of the market in Asia, a very small part in Europe, and a growing part in the rest of the world, including in America. Of course, if we're looking at the first line of figures, the cumulative capacity um, still shows a significant amount of PV capacity in Europe, uh, more than 100 gigawatts, to be uh, to be honest, but this share is going to re be reduced in the coming years due to the fastest development in other regions. Again, if we're looking at which are the countries where the level of installation in 2016 was the highest, it was China, without any doubt, followed by the US, Japan, India, and then a certain number of other countries starting with the UK, Germany, Thailand, Korea, Australia, the Philippines, and all the other countries in the world represented 10% of installations, so a bit more than 7 gigawatts. And in total, 76 gigawatts were installed. We will see a rather similar figure in 2017, but with an even higher share of one country, China, but I will come back on that. It's exactly the same thing if we're looking at the cumulative capacity end of 2016. Of course, the growth of the market during one year doesn't represent what happened in the past. So out of 303 gigawatts installed, you could see that China represented at that time around 26%, then followed by Japan, Germany and the US, and Japan, Germany and the US were roughly at the same level, around 40 gigawatts of installed capacity. And then we have countries mainly in Europe, where um, the, the growth of the market was significant a few years ago, but where almost nothing is happening for the time being. And I mean almost nothing compared to the gigawatt developments in the countries that I've mentioned before. So we can, of course, look at uh, Italy, UK, France, um, Australia, and some others. If we're looking at the key market features before going further, it's extremely interesting to look at the fact that if we take, the, and you can see it in the figure, um, the top 10 global markets uh, represent it year after year, an increasing share of the global market. It means that basically these big markets that we have seen, so namely China, Japan, the US, but also India and the European Union represent together a growing share of the global PV market. It means that basically a large part of the growth is concentrated in a limited number of markets. And we can even see that uh, if we look at the five largest markets, they represent more than 80% of the global market. It means that we have a market which is not really fragmented, which is still concentrated and you will tell me that China and India being the two largest countries in terms of population in the world, it's logical, but it also means that many countries where the PV market could develop haven't reached yet a significant le uh, level of market development. And if we're looking at what was achieved in 2016, and I'm giving you some insight on 2017, we had China dominating the market with 35 gigawatts in 2016, and it represented a bit less than 50 percent of the market and 53 gigawatts in 2017, which represents a bit more than 50 percent of the market. As a comparison, 
the US market, which went down in 2017, the Japanese market, which went also down, the European market, which was rather stable, and the Indian one, which went up, together are smaller than the Chinese market. It's not just a question of population, it's mainly a question of political will. As I was saying, emerging markets are growing, but basically the global growth of the market outside of China is not so important. It's about 15% a year. It's an interesting number, but it's not the complete revolution we might expect from a market that grew 100% um, in the last two years. Now I would like to give you some uh, bit more detailed insights on the way how the market evolved. So the figure which has been published in the trends report shows the evolution of the market from 2015 to 2016 and I have added some features about the 2017 market um, given the numbers that we have for the time being. And it's quite clear if you look at the US market that went down, the Japanese market that went slightly down and the European market that remains stable that basically a large part of the growth or the entire growth came from other markets. It came from China, it came from India, but it also came from emerging countries. Uh, we can see the, the glass half empty of, or half full, depending on how we're looking at things. But it means that basically the PV market is developing thanks to emerging countries, thanks to regions where the demand of electricity is significantly higher than the established markets like uh, Europe, the US or Japan that we have seen before. Now we have to look carefully at the evolution of, of China because the share of the Chinese market is so important that it influences completely the final picture. But even without China, the market would be growing. It would have grown less significantly than what we have seen, but it grew anyway uh, from 2015 to 2016 and from 2016 to 2017. Something I'm saying, that, saying very often is that when we discussing about PV, we should talk about two distinct PV worlds with, for the time being, one technology, even if things are changing. In case of inverters, it's already the case. It could become the case also for modules. We have distributed PV for self-consumption, in general on rooftops, and we're talking about concepts such as uh, the competition with utilities distribution business, the question of grid parity, um, and the equivalent of energy efficiency, we're talking about prosumers. And on the other side, we have these very large-scale PV plants, ground-mounted, which are in general injecting uh, electricity into the grid and are competing with the utilities tradition, traditional generation business. The surprise of 2017 is that for the first time uh, for years, if we accept 2012, which was a bit uh, specific, um, the share of utility scale is going to decline slightly. And it's coming from the fact, and we'll see it in the next slide, that basically one country succeeded in developing significantly its distributed PV markets, while most of the emerging markets are concentrated on centralized applications rather than distributed ones. That country is China. China has tried for years to develop its PV markets focusing on centralized and distributed application. Distributed applications were not super successful until 2017, where basically they represented 19 gigawatts or half of, or even more than half of all distributed PV applications in the world. And while um, distributed generation was roughly stable in the world from 2011 to 2016, while the utility scale market was developing, finally in 2017, we can say that basically the market grew of course, thanks to utility, utility scale applications, but also partially, and it's even more important, thanks to distributed applications in China. It means that other countries which are trying to develop their distributed PV markets, such as India, might find a very good example in what happened in China in 2017. And this is even more interesting. If we're looking region by region, we can see that basically the only region in the world, and these are 2016 numbers, where uh, the distributed PV market was dominant over the centralized PV market was Europe. All the other places in the, in the world were different. 
And even with the spectacular growth of the distributed PV market in China in 2017, it will not change the conclusion. The reason is quite simple. It's significantly easier to develop um, a centralized PV markets based on tenders and PPAs than to implement the policies that will allow a distributed PV market to develop. And it's the case in all regions of the world. It's the case in Europe as well. But in Europe, the only thing that explains that the distributed PV market is higher than the centralized one. It's much more the weakness of the centralized PV market rather than the strength of the distributed PV market. It's significantly easier in countries with a stable grid to develop distributed PV markets. It's, it's also visible in the US and in Japan, which have a good share of distributed PV, even if um, it's not as important as uh, we could expect. Now, the question is what drives the PV markets? And it's still the same thing. From a European perspective, we could imagine that with distributed PV, self-consumption um, is driving the development of PV. But globally, a very, very large part of the market is still driven by feed-in tariffs or financial um, incentives, such as the tax breaks that exist in the US. So we could say that the transition to a full competitive PV is not arrived and to a certain extent, 85 to 90 percent of the global PV market is still financially incentivized one way or another. Um, and it's something that we have to absolutely take into consideration when uh, we are saying that PV is competitive. It's the case in many locations, but it's not yet a general trend. And this is something uh, with which the PV industry in general should be very cautious. And if we're talking about prices, we have a tendency to look at the most competitive tenders. So basically, the price for PV system, which are significantly below one US dollar per watt. And so I will not give you numbers. I think we can go down to 0 0.8, 0 0.7 US dollar per watt peak. We have seen uh, installations which are even uh, cheaper than that. But basically, if we're looking at the distribution of the system prices, and it's done for 2016, we can see that basically 50% of the global PV market is below one US dollar per watt. The rest of the PV market, including rooftop PV, but also more, more um, expensive uh, centralized PV applications, are above one US dollar per watt peak. The most expensive installations are, of course, off-grid installations, but also some BIPV installations um, in some countries. It gives a very contrasted view on the PV market development with half of the market, which is extremely competitive and which uh, deals with centralized PV application. And another one, which is developing for the time being, the distributed one, which is less competitive uh, and is basically bringing in the uh, more important end value. Just to give you an idea, it's always interesting to look at the speed at which um, the LCOE of PV installation decreased. And basically, the most competitive tenders are giving a rather good uh, idea. I will not explain the figure too much. But um, it's possible in some locations to develop PV plants, which are producing, uh, in a profitable way, electricity below 20 US dollar per megawatt hour, so below two US dollar cents per megawatt hour. It's not the case in all locations, but we have seen that even in Germany, in Europe, it should be feasible to produce electricity below five US dollar cents per kilowatt hour in the most competitive case. So PV is reaching to a certain extent, a certain form of competitiveness, but it still requires some either incentives or some specific regulations in order to be allowed to develop. And in order to come slowly to an end, I think it's good to look at what PV represents now in the economy and in the electricity sector. This figure uh, shows basically the PV penetration in a certain number of countries with regards to the GDP per capita. Uh, what is it saying? It says that basically the countries with the highest GDP developed PV first. And the countries that we see now, and you can see them in purple, which are developing PV, are countries which have 
a smaller GDP per capita. It means something quite logical that we could have envisaged before is that PV developed in rich countries before moving to emerging countries. Now, if we look at, again, PV and the GDP, and we look at the contribution country by country, basically it shows that the contribution of PV is below 1% of the GDP in most countries. In 2016, we had some cases in one country in Europe, in Bulgaria, where the level of PV installation was so important during one year in the past that it reached more than 2 or even 3% of the GDP. But basically what we can see is that for the time being, at the rather low level of PV development that we still can see, we are below 1% of the GDP, even in countries where the development of PV is significant. It means that more can be done and that's basically the cost and the contribution to the economy could be even more important. Operation and maintenance that you see in the range are starting to be visible and even more visible in countries where the market has declined but where the installed capacity is extremely high, such as Germany or Italy, for instance. And of course, the question that everyone is asking, but how much does it represent uh, in the electricity demand of most countries? Uh, basically, globally, PV is approaching the 2% that it will most probably have reached at the end of 2017. We have almost uh, 25 countries uh, and even more above the 1% mark. And, and basically, we have um, uh, one country in the world where the penetration is higher than 10%. It's Honduras, and I'm not focusing on countries where, or smaller islands where indeed we can have higher penetration. We have a certain number of PVPS countries, which are visible here, but we have also a certain number of other countries which have developed PV relatively fast. At the end, and I would like to conclude with that, we can say that basically if we look at this very nice picture which has been developed by Chris Werner, we can see that we have a global PV cumulative capacity, which is concentrated in a certain number of countries, and we still have many countries where PV could develop. I would like to finish by inviting you to look at uh, PVPS Task 1 publications, and especially the Trends Report, which will be published this year during Q4, the snapshot of PV markets, which will be published next month, and um, the Self-Consumption Policies Report, which has been published two years ago, but still contains a lot of very useful information. And in order to conclude about the development of the markets, we can say now that the PV market spreads globally, with totally different results from one continent to another, but anyway, uh, stable growth. The growth that we saw at 100% in the utility scale segment until the end of 2016 is something which is changing, and 2017 is different, so we might see a much more balanced market in the coming years if some large markets are succeeding in um, basically developing their distributed PV markets. But feed-in tariffs and all the financial incentives and PV regulations are still needed to drive the market. This is something that looks a bit contradictory with the fact of saying that PV is competitive. So I could say it in another way, PV is competitive in many locations, but still needs the perfect environment in order to, to develop. That's the reason why tenders are rising and are used more and more. But the question can be asked if we have a tender during one year or two years in a country, how could the market develop after that? There, is many things to, there are many things to be done in order to be sure that the distributed PV market will be a, able to develop. We reached close to 100 gigawatts in 2017. The question is, is it just the beginning? And I will not answer that question, which relates more to the phase in PV forecast. But uh, most probably we will see a 200 or 300 or even 500 gigawatt market in the coming years. And I would like to thank you for your attention. I'm giving the floor back to Fernando before Izumi's presentation, and we'll have the question and answer after that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gaetan. Um, yeah, so I think we can, we can proceed uh, straight with uh, Izumi's uh, presentation. And then we will, we will go to questions and answers uh, for both of your presentations uh, all together. 
So, Izumi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Fernando, for this great opportunity. From now on, I'd like to give you a presentation on the PV industry. Um, I'm task one expert of Japan, but also the, uh, belongs to the uh, RTS Corporation. And my presentation is based on the IEA PVPS Torrens report uh, that's describing uh, about 2016. And uh, I'm responsible for the chapter four, the industry trends part. And, but today, uh, I use uh, some figures uh, about two, 2070, because I'd like to show uh, more latest figures or latest torrents. But please note that my figure for 2017 is not definitive numbers. Okay, that here is the content. Uh, because of the, uh, I'd like to explain how we conduct analysis. I'd like to a little bit to talk about my company. Then uh, I give the highlights from the IAPBPS trend report uh, focusing on the upstream sector. The, actually, the PBPS trend report includes the downstream sector, but uh, the uh, description is more uh, qualitative. So I'd like to do some of the figures of the upstream industries. Then I'd like to talk about issues and opportunity in the industry. So oh, this is about my cooperation and the, some of the data is based on my company that because my company established in 1983, I continue to watch the business trends and market trends and political trends of the PV market. And uh, now I'd like to uh, tell you how we conduct analysis of the industry part. The, the basically, we use the information of the member countries from the national survey reports. The each member country submit the national survey report with industry figures. But some, we, we have some lack of the information, so we use my company's primary survey for non-member countries and member countries. And also, the, we use available information and figures from industry association and company press releases. That, that's the way we made the uh, chapter four of the trend report. Yes, uh, this slide is something similar to Gaten already showed the, the our, our Install the capacity in 2017, it's almost 100 gigawatt. And because of this growth, the production volume also increased. And in this presentation, uh, this is quite busy uh, figure, so I, I do not explain uh, details. But the, the, mostly I explain about the cell and module production. And here, uh, this chart shows the uh, production capacity, production volume, and the installation volume. This orange bar shows the uh, demand, PB installation capacity, then the production volume, and then uh, capacity. The, uh, now we have more than, I think, the are very close to 120 gigawatt capacity, but the production was last year was something around 105 gigawatt. This is our latest estimation. 
So the, if we see the uh, difference between the production capacity and production volume, the gap is narrowing in 2017. Then uh, this shows the uh, production share by country. Uh, this figure is in 2016. The uh, left pie chart shows the cell production country share, and the right pie chart shows the uh, share of the module production. China was the number one country in both cell and PV module production. The trends of the 2017 is the same as in 2016. So this means China is the largest producer and largest consumer of the PB modules in the world. But if we compare the landscape of the cell production and module production, top three countries, you will see the difference. The number two, in cell production, Taiwan, then Malaysia comes the third. In case of the PB module production, the in 2016, the number two country was South Korea uh, because of the Hanfa Q cells, and the uh, number three uh, goes to Malaysia. The, as I said, the trends in 2017 is quite similar. This is the uh, figures from the uh, Chinese Photovoltaic Industry Association. According to CPIA, this industry association, uh, Chinese domestic production of the solar cell was 68 gigawatt, uh, more than 30 percent increase from the previous year, and. Uh, uh, Chinese domestic production with the solar cell accounts for the 68 percent of the world. And in case of PB modules, the, their share accounts for 71 percent of the world. And the increase of the uh, PB module production is quite high, 43.3 uh, percent increase and the production volume reaching 76 gigawatt, uh, almost uh, three-fourths of the global demand. And then I'd like to show the, uh, some of the uh, years of the top 10 module manufacturers. Uh, 2017 figures are still uh, not definitive. Uh, they are from the uh, IR documents or announcement of the companies, and we compiled. And one of the notable, notable things is in 2017, the North Sea film manufacturer in the top 10 players, uh, Fast Solar, uh, because of the, uh, they, the company decided to shift the uh, new generation PB modules. The, at now, the some of the uh, production sites are shifting to the new process lines. And the, if the company wants to be the top five manufacturer, the PB companies need to produce more than 5.5 gigawatt. It's quite big numbers, I think. Then I'd like to show the uh, major companies' production volumes. Uh, you can see uh, the top one manufacturer, Jinko Solar, has the 8 gigawatt of the production capacity. That this company shipped more than 9 gigawatt of the PB modules in 2017, uh, utilizing the uh, OEM production. And this is quite common.
because outsourcing cell or PV module production is sometimes strategically important in these days. The next slide shows the uh, major companies warehouse cell and module production capacity. So uh, more and more companies now are adapting very flexible manufacturing capacity. So uh, companies outsourcing the solar cell production or sometimes PV module production uh, in different ways. And I will uh, talk later, so sometimes due to trade conflicts or more and more pressure of the cost reduction, the, these flexible uh, outsourcing is one of the way to survive. So now uh, major companies has production sites uh, in many countries. The, this shows the uh, major company's production capacity uh, by country. The, for example, uh, Trina Solar, now they have the uh, solar cell manufacturing plant in Vietnam, Thailand, and some other countries as well. The, of course, the uh, production capacity in China is uh, huge. But recently, the, uh, because of the uh, various reasons, the manufacturing site is distributed globally. And one of the hot spots, the production volume is increasing in is Vietnam. So now as well as Trina, uh, GCL, and Neosora, they already established the manufacturing line in Vietnam, and also the fast solar thin film module manufacturers constructing 1.2 gigawatt facility there. So soon the Vietnam has more than uh, 3 gigawatt of the manufacturing capacity. Now uh, I'd like to talk uh, something about the technology. Uh, this shows the uh, production volume of the crystalline silicon and thin film. The because of the speed of the capacity expansion is higher than crystalline, uh, <coughs> thin film's production volume increase was uh, lower than crystalline silicon. The share of the uh, thin film uh, is expected decrease in 2017. As I said, the one of the reasons is fast solar uh, closed the part of the, their uh, line for the new product. And uh, this led this portion it mainly uh, comes from the uh, fast solar and solar frontier or other CIGS manufacturers. Uh, research and development of the uh, thin film is quite active, but the commercial scale production is uh, quite smaller than the, that of the crystalline silicon. But some of the products are now very competitive in terms of the efficiency. This is, thank you for Gaten. Uh, this shows the uh, cadmium terrorized modules becoming more competitive because of the efficiency improvement. But still, the same form needs to compete with the price of the silicon and the, also the crystalline silicon's efficiency is improving. So uh, at now, uh, the, we have many small sized thin film manufacturers, but it remains to be seen that those manufacturers can increase the production capacity or not. Now I'd like to talk about issues we observed in recently. Uh, because of the 
very low margin. So there, there is a question whether the PV production is sustainable or not. The, some, recently, the, some of the major manufacturers, they listed from the stock market in US because of the uh, very low uh, interest from the investors. And one of the uh, big issue now uh, emerging is trade conflict. So the, in 2018 or later, the trade conflict, especially the U.S. safeguard tariff, uh, may affect the shrink of the U.S. market. Also now India is considering the, the uh, tariffs. So this chart shows, sorry, this is in Japanese, but the green, bar, green shows the uh, price of the same films. The blue line shows the uh, price of the PB, mod, PB crystalline silicon PB module price. It's uh, around 32 or 34 US dollar per watt. Uh, at this level, uh, it is very difficult to make profit for PB module producers. And even number one top players, this is example of the Jinko Solar, the operating margin is quite low. So this allows the question, the, is PV module manufacturer sustainable or not? So I think we will see continuous consolidation of the industry for the mid-terms. And the, as I said, the trade conflict uh, may affect the uh, U.S. market. The President Trump decided to impose 30 percent tariff in the first year, and also the, uh, they set the exemption for the certain volume of solar cells. The, uh, this tariff uh, may result in the increase of the PV modules in U.S. and particularly the utility scale market may affect, may be affected. And also, the recently, the President Trump uh, decided uh, safeguard for aluminum and steel product. Uh, this also seems to affect the price of the structures or frames. But thinking about the share of the U.S. market, maybe the uh, impact is not so uh, huge for the entire industry. But uh, I'm concerning uh, about India's case because now India is uh, one of the growing market. Now I'd like to talk more uh, opportunities. So the, now the margin is very low, and the price seems to continue lower. And so the manufacturer needs differentiation of the product, the high efficiency or higher reliability or uh, added value product is required. And also the manufacturer uh, goes to the downstream segment uh, to be the energy provider from the component providers. And uh, the, this shows the trends along the value chain. The, uh, now the industry is making efforts uh, to reduce cost or to get higher efficiency or higher output of the energy with those technologies. And uh, the, actually, the, in China, uh, the Chinese government implement a very interesting program uh, to improve uh, the efficiency. That now the China implement top runner program. This is a kind of the uh, bidding program, but requirement for the uh, efficiency they set. And the 
I believe uh, this top plan uh, program uh, contribute to the increase of the uh, efficiency of the PV modules in China. And also the Taiwanese government has some requirement for the uh, higher efficiency PV modules because uh, they have the uh, bonus for the heat fit FYT uh, for good quality PV modules. And now I'd like to talk more on the value-added product. The, this is some of the uh, same manufacturers now are seeking the BIPB uh, in, in IEAPVPS task 15 is uh, making effort to promote BIPB. But these products at now the market size is very small, and it seems a niche market. But to, uh, the, with the increase of the distribution application, I think that the, the market will be created small by small in the future. And also, the many uh, uh, Japanese companies are now are seeking the, this market. And Maybe this might be the uh, takes uh, more years, but now uh, the, some of the companies uh, integrated solar cells in the cars, and uh, actually the uh, Chinese manufacturers also are thinking to entering into this market. And in IEA PBPS, a uh, new task group are uh, considering the contribution of the PB for transportation will started in this uh, April. And this is my last slide. The, as I said, the, now the industry facing the very tough time with lower margins also the uh, uh, trade conflicts, but the speed of the market size is quite significant. And the past outlook always could not catch up the reality. So uh, 2017, we had 100 100 gigawatt market, and if this continues soon, before 2030, uh, we will reach the terawatt era. The, in such era, uh, we have many applications, not only for the grounded, mounted, or uh, rooftops. And uh, I, I hope the PB industry uh, can create the uh, more value for the future. PV market. Thank you for attention. I need thanks to NEDO uh, for the support of the PBPS activities.